All right. So for my second story tonight into one of our cases, I have to dive back into the Delphi madness. We have been talking about it almost every week lately because I just feel like it gets crazier and crazier and crazier and crazier. And the reason why I want to dive back into it is one, I, I want to leave this an open conversation. So we'll go pretty much the normal length of uh, one of our case videos in an open conversation style, because I want to be able to highlight the areas where this is uncommon for an average case. So one thing that it's really easy to do in any scenario that you're investigating is, is start looking at the case through, you know, a pinhole and uh, to pigeonhole your your view where you're not paying attention to the outside surroundings of it. So one thing that I think our viewers who watch us probably don't have a lot of time to do is investigate. So they hear us talking about it. And I'm worried that there are a lot of people out there that don't understand like the massive difference in what is normal and what we're seeing in Delphi. Like, is Delphi normal drama for a case? No, it's not. Okay. Does everybody who watches us know that? Um, is what Judge Goal is doing normal decisions for an average judge? No, it's not. But does everybody who watches us know that? Is, you know, the way Richard Allen's being treated uh, standard in any case? No, it's not. But does anyone understand that? You know what I mean? So I wanted to be able to dive in. It seems so obvious, right? It's because, so not normal. Right. And But it, that's obvious to us because we're investigating this. And then we bring one or two topics to the case table and we talk about the absurdity of that within the Delphi case. And not always touching on the broader scope of the entire scenario, the investigation, what we're seeing from Judge Goal. And uh, you have a ton of knowledge on the Delphi case, probably a, more than I do, uh, for sure more than I do. But uh, that's why I figured it is a good idea to to just kind of go into it open-ended here. For anybody that, uh, you know, watches our Idaho four stuff and is starting to get into the Delphi stuff because our Delphi videos are starting to get more momentum than they had previously. It made me want to dive back in and just kind of, you know, give the rundown. So, uh, you know, the Delphi murders refer to the tragic case involving the deaths of, uh, the teenage girls, Abigail Williams and Liberty German in Delphi, Indiana, um, and, uh, the disappearance happened on February 13th, 2017. Well, Abigail's 13. Liberty was 14. They went hiking near Manon High Bridge, which is a super popular trail in Delphi. Multiple people every day. Uh, when they didn't return as expected, their families reported them missing. And, uh, they were discovered the following day. And that's what really where the madness begins right there. And that's oh, where we have, immediately. Yeah, I know immediately. That's where we have just some key points, right? Um, is the, the layout of the crime scene was strange, uncommon. It is not what you would normally see for uh, a standard murder scene. Um, it uh, it had elements to it which were so outside of what would be normal, um, and a lot of it wasn't even being picked up on at first, right? Then you have the FBI getting involved. Then you have what we found out recently where they uh, unsealed the crime scene, left for a day, and then came back, resealed it, and that's where they found the casing. And that's... Well, the bullet that was... Not the shot. Bullet. Yeah, I'm sorry. And the it was buried. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. not just laying there. It was under the dirt. Yeah. For yeah. who knows how long. Now, I want to say Manon High Bridge is only a place a local would know about. <clears throat> it is not somewhere that you would like stop by Delphi, Indiana and be like, oh, yeah, let's go to that popular Manon High Bridge that everybody walks on. Technically, you're not allowed to walk on that bridge. It is part of like a trail in the area 
and pretty much only locals know about it. But yes, a lot of locals, because it's beautiful out there, like to go walk on it. But it's extremely dangerous. Um, you know, a lot of people thought that the girls fell off the bridge and that's what happened to them because it's dangerous. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, we have text messages actually that were leaked and there's questions about if those are real or not, but it was a, a civilian who found the crime scene mm. and they believe it was an uncle of one of the girls. And there's text messages, messages from him saying one of them was nearly like cut yeah. their head was off almost. Wow. Um, and that it was horrible. Uh, you know, we know a little bit more about the crime scene now because of also the Frank's memorandum and that the girls were ensanguinated, you know, drained of blood, um, that there wasn't blood all around them on the ground. It's like they had been drugged there. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, uh, Abby was clothed. Libby was not, um, they had knife wounds to the neck, things right, like right, that. Right. Without getting too much into like the, the crime scene itself, but the I want to say it was adultered. It was corrupted immediately by yeah. civilians. Millions. Yep. 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 No, I, I got you. But what's important is like the law enforcement part here. How did the law enforcement manage it and how we're seeing the current judicial system locally manage it there too. And I yeah. think it's important that we're just now hearing that the crime scene was uh, evacuated, right? And then came back and then they found this casing. What my first thoughts when I heard that are, okay, well, how did they find it if it was buried, number right. one? Number two, if they brought out metal detectors, like why wasn't that done initially too, right? Because if we're looking at stab wounds, wouldn't it be easy for somebody to take a knife and just push it into the ground? Yes, obviously. So, There's no pictures of it either. Yeah, yeah. They didn't take pictures. Right. So um, there, it just popped up, right? After they unsealed the crime scene and walked away from it for 24 hours and then resealed it. In my opinion, and multiple attorneys have said this, anything that's found after it's been unsealed should be null and void. You have no idea how it got there. You have no idea if it was there during the crime, before the crime, after, during that 24-hour period. You have no idea. But... Uh, the local, again, judicial system and law enforcement um, didn't bring that forward willingly, openly, it feels like. Um, and then you have the obvious now, the judge goal and all the decisions she's making. And, and what's interesting is, like I was saying in the beginning of this, the decisions that are being made are so uncommon and the biggest most obvious one is uh the the court record right the uh the court documents that are required by law to be made available publicly unless they've been you know sealed uh for some reason and what's interesting is everywhere you hear judge goal wants to be a supreme court justice like that's her goal to move up you know how are you making decisions like this and you think you're going to move up? Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, it, <laughs> she's making understand. awful decisions. The Supreme Court specifically said, stop taking things off the docket. So it's and the fact there's not even a docket. No, there really that isn't. Public has access to like, OK, look at the Brian Koberger docket where you can get all the information and then look at the Indiana one. And there, it nothing. And when they seal something, it has to go through an approval process. Like, and you have a document saying motion to seal. We're not getting that in this case. She is just taking a document that, you know, the state or the defense has put up and just removing it. This docket yeah. is extremely important. Keeping a record is extremely important, not only for the public, but in case he is convicted and yeah. needs to appeal his case then the appellate court has no history they had nothing to go off of yeah and look and listen to this so this is on uh, a law a legal website as you may be aware most court documents are actually available to to the public for viewing under the first amendment most court proceedings are public matters and case files are public record the idea that anyone can look up your name and see the full details of legal dispute you are or were involved in is 
disconcerting to most Americans. Understanding why court documents are public record, why so many people are concerned about privacy, and how you can get your court documents sealed can help you understand the U.S. judicial system more thoroughly and navigate your case with confidence. Then it goes into here saying, you know, court records are public information, at least hypothetically, to help citizens hold the government and other organizations accountable for their actions. Making court documents public record can also help citizens keep courts accountable and try to ensure courts are corruption free hello that That can't happen when you have a judge removing anything that she deems you know unacceptable on the record for the public to see and it under the first amendment yeah that's it is not allowed Mm -hmm. and she wants to become a supreme court justice and they're the ones saying what are you doing why put it all back Dude, why? Like, she would be the worst Supreme Court judge ever. Wouldn't it be She'd scary be terrifying. if because of this she got it or something crazy like that? She would be a terrifying Supreme Court I, judge. I agree. I agree. Because they have a lot of power. A ton of power. Yeah, I know. I know. But you know one thing I wanted to mention? That right away with the, with the crime scene, um, they didn't know what they were doing. You know what I mean? Like, so one thing that I've questioned with that bullet is that, like you said, they sealed it, unsealed it, resealed it, found the bullet, didn't take any pictures. There's no proof of them ever finding it other than that's what they say happened. Well, you have a search warrant for Ron Logan's house. His house literally overlooks the crime scene. It is his property. Mm hmm. He was a suspect, clearly, Mm -hmm. Uh, even if they didn't want to say it officially. Well, they get a search warrant for his place. They mentioned the cell phone pings that he was in the area. He he lied about his alibi and had concocted it literally before anyone ever, like literally before the crime, he had concocted this alibi. Right. Um, And he has a gun that's the same caliber as the bullet that was found that they found in his home. Yet. In the search warrant, in any documentation relating to them searching his house, there's no mention of the magic bullet. Why? Where did this magic bullet come from? When was it actually found? Wasn't wasn't it the FBI who conducted the search warrants of yes, his house? It was. And you know what's so also did the FBI not have access to? Did this they not bullet? know about it? Yeah. Did they have no idea about it? Also, Mm. I didn't know this. I I didn't realize this. I don't know if it slipped past me or something, but they exhumed a cat from Richard Allen's yard and say they matched the cat. Yeah, I forgotten about it. Like it slipped past me because I I didn't really put much thought into this for some reason. Mm -hmm. They exhumed a cat from his yard and said the hair from that cat matches hair they found at the crime scene. No way. Mm-hmm. What? That's what they say. I've never heard this. That there's hair matching. I've heard about the cat. I just don't I don't remember like the, the key details of the story. <clears throat> yeah, I don't remember it all either. I just heard it today, earlier today. Since when I don't remember hearing any of that. Yeah, but, when and who exhumed it and how? Mm, I don't know. They see like a, a pile of dirt that didn't have grass there or something. And they're like, let's go digging. Well, on, I would ask then because hair already, you can't get a full STR DNA profile from a hair. Okay. Unless it has a root. Well, I don't know how you do the whole DNA matchup on a cat or if they literally just looked at it and saw similar pattern, but they were out in the wild in the forest. Like, there could be cats out there. Like, did they check to see if they had cats and it was a, a cat that had a similar pattern? Because a lot of towns, if there's a lot of cats in that area, will have very similar looking cats. Yeah. So I would be curious. We need to do some digging into that science. Like, how likely is our science right now to be able to match up a cat hair to a cat hair? 
Right. Is cat hair different than human hair to where there's a core that gives them DNA? You know what I mean? I, I found that very intriguing. It slipped past me until today. I didn't, I n- never thought about it. So, I mean. It's strange. Yeah. It's really strange. Um, but yeah, it, when, when you're over, when you're looking over this entire case from the grand scope here and, and just seeing problem after problem after problem after problem, it still goes back to what we're dealing with currently with judge goal. And I've said this already a couple times, but you have coffin daffer who is like, so blue blood, the most blue blood person right. ever, you know, ex FBI. I get it. Okay. I'm not, I'm not putting her as a person down because of it. I understand it because of her background and everything. I get it. But uh, she's coming out and saying like, dude, what the heck is this judge doing? What is wrong with her? You know, exactly. And if she's saying it, you have problems here, judge gold, major problems. So like it, as far as I'm concerned, I see a court record that is inaccessible to the general public. Um, so it is not within First Amendment rights. Uh, it is not being managed the correct way. It is. It does not have the 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 correct sealing uh, requirements of an expiration date and all of those things that come with sealing documents. So. I go back to why and how, you know, and then we're seeing like this weird bond that's being created by the prosecution and judge goal where they come from different areas. So the likelihood that they know each other on a personal level is very slim, but why is the judge allowing the prosecution to be so close to the judge's rulings in this case? I don't I don't understand that either. That's why it feels corrupt to me. Um is that I feel like there's connections going on here that are improper. <laughs> I I really do. That's why I did that episode last week talking about um masonry. And I know it seems far-fetched and it seems tin hat and it's out there and maybe it is. It is kind of out there. But the thing that's not out there is when you have personal connections. Okay. We know judge goal liked a post about the Abby and Libby Memorial field that people she knows, you know, kids in her family, um, played at and she liked the post. Um, like, you know, she's connected to the case somewhat for one. Also, um, her appointing those attorneys that she also had a personal connection with, um yeah, when we're talking about the these... way she the way she removed the original attorneys was strange. I mean, yeah. it's just one after another and and the entire time she's had the prosecution very close in these decisions asking them what their opinion is where right. that is nowhere in any universe an acceptable request or ask or offer to give to ask the prosecuting attorneys if they agree with and or believe in or support the judge's decision on the defense attorneys like they're they're equals that's like that's like as a parent going to one of your kids and asking what they think about the punishment for another kid. You know what I mean? Right. That's not acceptable. What do you mean? I just don't know about this case. I just feel like the, con- I feel like, okay, so I, I came across more information and I'm going to go further into it. There's going to be a part two of the Mason video because this connection between people in fraternities, because that's what we're talking about when we're talking about masonry. Like you can just throw out all of the, Fraternal you know, orders. yeah, you can throw out all the conspiracy theory stuff about the Freemasons. That's not what's important here. What's important is the connections that fraternities build between people. And important people but they don't just build connections between only important people it's also you can be a nobody and join the masons you do not have to be special which is what makes it interesting that brad holder comes from a family of masons and is a mason because he seems like so random 
Like what? He's a Mason? That's that doesn't make any sense. A, a, a gang either member or associate. OK, like from his own mouth, he is a gang member or associate. Um, and in the Masons. Yeah, because Patrick Westfall strange. straight up in Sleuth Intuition's YouTube interview said he was a Vinlander. Yep, I know. Straight up. And Brad Holder was his friend. And Brad Holder was practicing the Odinism stuff with him. And yep. he's also a Mason. Like, and then you have the fact that they go to the same lodge as Nick McClelland. Yeah. And you have the fact that Goal is also associated with Masons and 33rd degree Masons, like Shriners, because you have to be a 33rd degree Mason to be a Shriner. Yeah. Yeah. So these connections, the Tin Hat conspiracy stuff doesn't matter. It's the connections. And if you're willing to do favors for people you're connected with, and it just so happens that within this fraternal order, if somebody asks you for help, you have to give it to them and you are required to keep secret. And there are penalties for not doing that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Unfortunately. Yep. And I think that's why these orders are so dangerous. You know, you know, I would be curious to look into because we've talked briefly on and they're never popular videos about, uh, you know, the difference in overall happiness of a nation and how you have like Finland, which is the most happy nation and their government doesn't keep secrets. And it just like we've drawn the connection that secrets can create distrust and a happiness. Obviously, I feel like that's so blatantly obvious. Right. Yep. Um, but then uh, you have. uh in Finland, do they have fraternal orders in the same way that we do here? Um, you know? I do know that there are like Nordic Masons. There are Freemasons up in those countries. I just don't know if they're in Finland. Or if it's the same level as it is here. Right. You know? uh, yeah. Because uh, most of That's a good our point. politicians and judicial leaders are a part of some sort of fraternal order almost all of them you're I'm, absolutely right i go so far as to say more of them are than aren't okay yep so um and it, a lot of judges and lawyers I was too just gonna say that a yep. lot if you, if you look at the the supreme uh judges or justices or not whatever, just supreme most i think i think all of them, actually, if I'm remembering correctly, I'm trying to remember what I read, but I think all of them except one or something was in a fraternal order, committed fraternal order, which is interesting, right? Mm -hmm. Because because then that that begs the question of what's more important then uh, is our justice system and our law more important is the safety and the rights of the people more important is uh your fraternal orders rules more important if you had a fraternity member lifelong fraternity member come forward and you're a supreme justice and they say look i me and my girl were drinking we had too much to drink uh we got in a fight i snapped and i ended her life uh, I need you to help me and, and, you know, don't go to the police. Like, where is that person's allegiance is going to lie because they're in the fraternal order. Are they not going to say anything because that's what the fraternal order says to do and they're going to help them or are they duty bound by their position? Right. And I think these are very logical questions, not tin hat questions. These are very logical questions. Well, you know, there's some more connections with the Masons in that town that I don't feel comfortable talking about just because it involves victim families. But that information's out there that it's a lot more intertwined than it's a small town. It is it, a small it's town. It's a tiny town. And all of these Mason lodges has all have also converged into like one or two so that all these surrounding towns are all going to the same lodges. Yeah, and it's lodge number 33, like their their most sacred number. Well, there's the Mount Zion Lodge and the Tipton Lodge. Yeah, the Tipton Lodge is, is the, the lodge number 33, which is their most sacred number. But, you know, I it just keeps bringing me back to Judge goal you know and i keep hoping that every time we see a ruling that judge goal is going to 
have somebody close to her call her on her crap and be like, you've told me what you want in your career. Do you realize you are burying your career doing this? You're burying it. You need to stop. You just got that leadership position now for the second time. Why are you not backing out of this and getting your name out of the limelight so that you can move up like you want? Well, doesn't it make you curious why the first judge stepped down and the prosecutor? We have a prosecutor who stepped down from this case in their job. We've had a judge step down from specifically this case. Uh, it's really weird. It it is strange. It like, is did strange. they like? It almost makes you like my conspiracy brain starts going. It's like, did they need a specific prosecutor or a specific judge on this case? Right. Like, yeah. And I, you have I, the I old you. town mayor as the prosecutor helping McLeland too. Yeah, yeah. That super young mayor where I was already like a mayor. What? That's just really uncommon yeah no experience no nothing but yeah i i don't understand it and i i feel like this is why a lot of people are on the outside asking why and when i'm looking at this case i have a hard time pointing out the areas that are normal yeah having a man incarcerated in a prison before I, he's ever convicted i don't know why Anybody would ever argue that's okay and saying, well, it's for his safety. You know, the jail said they couldn't keep him safe. Yeah, right. Then you don't understand prison. Yeah. Jail is way safer than prison, like a million times more safe than prison. Are you kidding? Yeah. And what's interesting, though, and why that always stands out to me is because of who manages the jails. It is uh, the sheriff. Yeah. It is the state sheriff's uh, office that manages the jails. Um, it's part of their job. So are they not a part of this weirdness? I, I don't know. Well, you know. know what's weird is that the sheriff still goes and picks him up from prison and transports him. He's still in charge of transporting the man. Well, I, I'm curious as to what's the argument that he's safer in prison because are you saying you're afraid of people breaking into the jail and hurting him? Then put him in a county over in another county jail. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you're worried about him being in that town and that people in that town that work in your jail can't be trusted because this case hits too close to home. Yeah. Put him in another county jail. Yeah. I mean, we've that's already nearby. Been, we've already been shown because I can't trust the, uh, What's it called? The DO um, Department of Corrections. No, clearly not. Yeah. That warden was allowing, look what he was allowing. He with was the allowing, Odinus. yeah, uh, gang related patches to be worn on a DOC official. And now face tattoos. Yeah. And now face tattoos, which is unheard of. That is not normal. And, and all of this loses the sight of the victims and stomps all over everybody's freedoms, rights, civil liberties. It absolutely does. Um, I just, prison is notorious for hurting people who hurt kids. I, I, it is notorious. Everybody knows that. Yeah. Jails are not because they are specifically a place that's like a transition place, mm -hmm. a place where you're serving less than a year or you're awaiting trial. It's easy for your lawyers to come in and talk to you and plan your case with you. Yeah. Like, I don't know how anybody could see this is anything but wrong. And again, more decisions on the judge. Like the person who was the deciding factor of this was the judge. Yeah. Um, and it, it again goes back to me not understanding this because look, let's just look at it from judge goals perspective for a second. If I'm judge goal and I have the insight to see the entire case and without a doubt, Richard Allen's guilty because there was a trail cam out there and that caught him on camera. Okay. How he's being treated right now is still not okay because we have to follow our, 
our our rules and laws for our legal system. Yeah. For you should still be in a jail. Yeah, because you're still not allowed to railroad somebody, even if they are 100% for a fact guilty. You're and, still not allowed to railroad them. And it doesn't make... He, it, he would or mistreat still be them. As disgusting. He would still be as guilty. We would still be able to convict him and put him where he was supposed to be. But we could do it the right way where, like, our justice system can hold their head high and uh, be respected. We're doing things in a way right now, or that judge goal is where it's like in the shadows. It's gross. It feels dirty. It's disgusting. Um, I hope that she literally flushed her entire career down the toilet is what I hope. Well, you know, also McClelland, the prosecutor in this case used to be a defense attorney. He literally defended his own father in an arson case where his father was an arsonist. Um, which is interesting. Yeah. And apparently he also comes from a lineage of Freemasons, which is also very interesting. Um, but he was a defense attorney and went to be a prosecutor, which is not very normal. It's That's, normally flipped. It's normally flipped. Yeah. But you would think with him having experience as a defense attorney, and if he's not corrupt and he's a good attorney who cares about the justice system, working for the people, finding true justice, which means the truth. OK, the truth of what happened, the truth of who did it and holding that person accountable and keeping the public safe and getting justice for the victims and the families. Well, wouldn't you think he would look at this having defense experience and say, OK, Richard Allen isn't being treated right. What Judge Gull is doing is hurting my case. Yeah, I agree. She is destroying my case. I agree. I and, agree. And all the hard work put into it. Exactly. So yeah. why is he not speaking up? Why is he on her side? Yeah. And her on his. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to me. She's destroying all. your reputation, McClelland. You dummy. Yeah. She's destroying your case. This is one of those situations where I, I really wish the FBI were still in the case. Um, and, you know, e even when you're looking at some of the evidence on site there, like the the BLOD on the tree, um, l like I've seen a lot of people say, you know, that that could be anything that could be this, that could be that. But then at the same time, I look at the tree and like the bark is so rough. So what are you suggesting that somebody chose to wipe their hand like on that super rough crevice tree to like wipe it off? That would hurt and not be very effective. No, why wouldn't you do it on the grass or the ground? <laughs> or, or the, the river? Stream. The river? Yeah. That right will behind. wash it away? Yeah. That you already have clearly been to because they found clothes in it. Yeah, I know. I know. They clearly I washed things in that river. They put that on the tree for a reason. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. Well, but they say that this, the, the, the crime scene was staged. But here's the thing. Is that Richard Allen, unless he's involved in some dark web and he's like, a you know, knows all about the dark web, which there's no indication that he does at all. Um, there's no Internet history that he knows any Odinist, knows anything about Odinism, ever knew Libby or Abby or looked them up. He, there's literally zero connection to any of it. Yeah. That is not something you could just know. I didn't know anything about runes. I didn't know anything about like the Nordic religions other than what I watched on Vikings. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. it doesn't show you runes and all that stuff. No. They just talk about Odin and Valhalla and they, you know, fight. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. But. Like, you don't learn all those things. Those things come from somebody who has either extensively looked into the practice of that Nordic pagan belief or practices it. Yeah. They had to have researched the practice or practiced it. Yeah. But, uh, and why would that be his intention to do that? To specifically stage it, to look like a pagan ritual. I have no clue. I, I don't think why not a satanic one. Satanic one would make way more sense for somebody who's not, you know what I mean? 
Maybe. I, I think either of them don't make a lot of sense. I, I don't know. I would have to have some connection to either of them. T- to me, like one doesn't make more sense than the other. It all has to do with the background information that I would receive. I mean, if you're person. trying to stage it, yeah, if I, you are coming from you. America, yep. you're a hometown mm-hmm. kind of guy who grew up around Christianity, yep. staging it, if you're trying to make it look like some cult thing, staging it as like a satanic crime makes way more sense than me, but... Yeah. Well, I deflection so it to me it it could be either one it doesn't matter one one is just painfully obvious and uh, one just so happens would, to be there's a ton of those type of people in this area yeah 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 that he has no connection to right right but uh yeah hopefully we answered a few of your questions and if you have more questions on this story you guys i hope that you leave them below and let those thoughts riot uh I hope that we were able to lay it out. I know a lot of people have left comments that, hey, you know, I love your Idaho 4 content. I haven't had a chance to catch up on the Delphi stuff. So I hope we were able to break down like the basics of it, the who, what, where, and why, and like why this is so strange. But everything right now coming from the uh, the judge, everything right now coming from the prosecution and all the decisions being made are are outside of what anyone would consider normal. So, um, you know, I'd love to answer your questions further. So just leave them in the comments below. Definitely.